Welcome everybody. This is a very special video. I said, let me do this um, on a special day of Christmas. I would like to wish all my viewers a very, very happy Christmas and a very happy new year 2017. Now, this morning when I was doing my meditation, I had kind of a, a revelation. And I said, let me do this short video and share my insights and my revelations that came to me uh, on this special day of Christmas. And any inconsistencies or fallacies in this video, you know, I would like to say I would attribute it to my ignorance and I would like to seek forgiveness and mercy from Jesus Christ. In this video, I'm going to talk about the life of Jesus Christ through Mradu Nakshatras. Mradu, the word Mradu in Sanskrit translates as mild, soft, tender. So when I started meditating on uh, Jesus Christ and on the Madhu, Mradu Nakshatras, they gave me a lot of insights this morning. And Mradu Nakshatras, there are four Mradu Nakshatras in the zodiac or in the 27 Nakshatras. And the first Mradu Nakshatra is Mraga Nakshatra. Mragashira Nakshatra. And the second Mradu Nakshatra is Chitra Nakshatra. The third Mradu Nakshatra is Anuradha Nakshatra. And the fourth Mradu Nakshatra is Revati Nakshatra. So let us look at the life of Jesus and what 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 the interpretations and all these interpretations are mine and I would like to correct that this would be just an interpretation and I can stand corrected and this is only an attempt to show the connection with the love of God and the love of Jesus on the special day of Christmas. So the first nakshatra that I was talking about is Mraga Shira Nakshatra. Now this nakshatra is called as the searching star. And what correlation I'm making with this nakshatra is the correlation of the lost years of Jesus. You know, even in the Bible, they say there are certain years, number of years in the life of Jesus, which have not been documented. And many scholars, many historians, and these could be only theories, but many of them are to believe that Jesus actually traveled south southwest or southwards towards uh, India and then towards Tibet and finally making his way to Egypt before he went back to teach or uh, you know to go back his, to his preachings. Now Mrakashira, as I said, is the searching star. And you can see that the, the Lord, the deity associated with Mrakashira is the moon. The moon always travels at a very fast pace and the moon can be associated with the mind. And this is the mind, this is the fluttering mind, the fickle mind that Jesus wanted to get um, you know, control over. Or he wanted to understand the deeper secrets of the mind and what the mind has in store for us. So you can see the nakshatra here, Mragashira, the searching star, and the deity is Soma. And you can see the direction of Mragashira is south. And that's where you can see that Mragashira is actually the connecting point between two Rashis. One is an earthy sign, which is Taurus. Another is an airy sign, which is Gemini. So two paths of Bragashira falls in Taurus and two paths fall in Gemini. And this is the bridge. So it is basically, it is an interpretation that I'm making is 
the connection with the left brain or the left hemisphere of the brain and the right hemisphere of the brain and that is the connecting point that is the the point where the left brain and the right brain meets and that's where most of the knowledge the, uh, the awakening needs to happen the purushartha of this nakshatra is moksha so this is what jesus was in seek of he wanted to understand the deeper secrets of the cosmos he wanted to understand the secrets of liberation of attaining uh, you know the understanding of the greater secrets of this cosmos and that's why you see this nakshatra mragashira which means you know the searching to go exploring and that's in the quest of knowledge in the quest of wisdom he went eastwards towards india and towards egypt and sorry eastwards towards india and towards tibet that's where he was um, you know seeking this enlightenment look at the shakti here the shakti element is called as pranana shakti the pranana means the power to give fulfillment and joy the foundation above is to extend extension is the mind you want to extend and explore that the, the, to extend is the sky the sky is limitless it's boundless okay so this is the association that you see with the mind of jesus foundation below is to weave to produce clothing it is to weave all this integrate details of the universe of the cosmos the greater secrets of the cosmos he wanted to understand them and you see the gana is a deva gana the element is earth so obviously he wanted to find his uh, you know he he wanted to find his foot in understanding the greater secrets the trimurti principle is vishnu again it is the preserver the maintain to understand the 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 creation of vishnu the cosmos the universe okay the result that you see what he wanted to achieve is to make the world enjoyable to to make a world free of pain to bring more peace to bring more stability to bring more joy and fulfillment in our lives that was his goal and this was through mragashira nakshatra okay so this is where he actually explored and then that's where he and he, through his explorations he discovered the ultimate the enlightened he became the enlightened the next mrudu nakshatra is chitra nakshatra it's called the star of opportunity and look at the shakti associated with this it is called as punya chayani shakti punya chayani shakti means the power to accumulate good karmas or merit in life so you can see it the symbol is twasta the deity is twasta the tutelary archetype is twasta twasta is the is um, uh, the celestial architect so jesus was trying to figure out uh, the creation through the creator twasta or you know you can say vishwakarma the cosmic craftsman and the symbol here is the jewel so all these uh, years of penance all those years of um, you know going into deep meditation and doing the sadhana gave jesus the ability to see the precious jewels or the precious wisdoms of life to trying to get the knowledge deeper hidden secrets of life and that is the the jewel that he could get and this is because of the the accumulated good karmas on the merits associated with chitra nakshatra and that is you can see that this nakshatra give him that also remember the last nakshatra i spoke about margashira the primary motivation at the primary level the guna is it is called as a rajasik the primary motivation of margashira nakshatra is rajasik rajasik is movement rajasik means um, you know is is movement and that's why you can see that his travels and the last years can be co connected to the rajas element rajas element is the desire to know the desire to move the desire to connect and when you come to chitra nakshatra now the primary motivation of this nakshatra the guna is tamasik this is where you try to consolidate on your learnings consolidate on your findings consolidate on the information that you have gathered through your penances 
through the austerities, austerities that you've done. L look again here, the, the Purushartha is karma. This is the latent desire, this is the latent passion, which was very, very inherent in Jesus. He wanted to get to the sweet spot of knowledge. And that's what he did. And the element here is Agni. Again, it shows the burning desire or the, uh, or the karmas which have given him this knowledge, this unique knowledge that you see. And this was the opportunity. Look at the foundation above. Foundation above is law. It's the laws that he was wanting to see, the cosmic laws, the, the natural laws, the laws of universe. And the foundation below, you see, is truth. What he found is by understanding the cosmic laws, understanding nature, understanding the greater secrets of life, or greater secrets of the universe, he could establish what is truth. And that is foundation below. The desire is to have wonderful children. His only desire was to preach and to give this message of love so that our future generations of children become wonderful, become more enlightened. There could be more peace on this planet. So he was trying to architect, you know, trying to bring structure into, uh, into the activities on the earth plane. And I very strongly believe he was a prema avatar, which means an avatar of love, compassion that he wanted to teach and that he wanted to bring those teachings. Uh, and that is the only truth that we have today on this planet. The result is to gain honor in one's work. It is the desire of a God that the message that he wanted to send through his messenger, which is Jesus, he wanted to achieve this. And so that everybody could be able to achieve this honor in one's work and dedication to God. The next nakshatra, which is Mridhu, is Anuradha nakshatra. Anuradha nakshatra is associated with the planet Saturn. So it shows some element of uh, going through uh, a little bit of difficult times, going through turbulations, trials. It is through service. It is a service-oriented nakshatra. It's a social nakshatra. Okay, the deity here is Mitra. Mitra means the solar deity of friendship, and this was the message of love, compassion, and friendship, which you know Jesus wanted to share. It's his very very famous saying. He says, "Love thy neighbor, forgive them, because they don't they do not know what they're doing." So these are all this. These are all the characteristics of Mitra, the deity, the energy. The Shakti here is called as Radhana Shakti. Radhana means the power to worship. And Jesus wanted to show the love to God and the power of worship that we can achieve on this planet. The Purusharta is Dharma. He wanted to establish righteousness. He wanted to establish Dharma on this plane. Again, the Gana, the race is a Devagana, which is divine. Again, the Trimurti principle is Vishnu, is to preserve, to maintain, to maintain peace, to maintain prosperity, to maintain compassion, to maintain love in the hearts of the people. And you see, it is a solar deity, so you can see his hand, the hand of God, he wanted to show us. Foundation above is to ascend. This is what, you know, um, you know, he taught us, he, he wanted us to ascend. And this is what his crucifixion was, an ascension. And then he finally descended back. Okay, the desire or through resurrection, when he came back, the desire was to be regarded as a friend in all the worlds. Jesus' message was friendship of brotherhood, of peace, of compassion. I repeat all of these because this is what Jesus is all about. And the result is honor and abundance. It's bringing honor in our lives, bringing abundance of love, compassion in our lives to understanding the greater secrets of the cosmos, which Jesus wanted to teach us. And finally, you see 
the nakshatra, which is an, the fourth Mritu nakshatra, is a Revati nakshatra. The Sanskrit word Revata means a descendant from a wealthy family or a descendant from the clouds, a descendant from above. This is the literal translation of Revata in Sanskrit. Descendant from the clouds. Where did he descend back from after his resurrection? He descended from above. He descended from the clouds. It is called as a wealthy star. What is the wealth that he gave us? He gave us the wealth of understanding, of uh, you know, compassion, love. This was the constant teachings that you see. And the Shakti associated with this nakshatra is the power to nourish, to protect and to foster. The power of nourishment is symbolized by Shira because it's Shira Dhyapani Shakti, which means it's the milk which gives you nourishment. And that is what you see is Jesus wanting to tell us, look at the, the symbol there of the fish. The fish is the symbol or a pair of fish is a symbol of this Nakshatra Revati. Also the symbol of the, the zodiac sign Pisces. Now look at again this Purushartha here, it's moksha, it's liberation. It's nirvana that he has come back on this earthy plane, he's after his resurrection, is to come back as Pushyan. Pushyan was the lord of um, the, you know, the travelers. He is the, he used to safeguard uh, the pathways. So he's, it is the safeguarding of the pathways of our liberation from this planet, of how we are going to traverse back. And he has been there and he's come back to teach us these lessons of the pathways that he has been through of, and he can take us safely across. Pushan is about, you know, safe journeys. He is also the guardian of the animals, of lost articles, of lost items. This is what Jesus is about. He has bring, he's come back to us to teach us about the lost things. We have lost our values. We have lost our um, identity being here because we are only focused on the religion. We have missed out on the greater teachings of Jesus, the higher teachings of Jesus. It's Mercury is the planet which is here, which shows you that it is all about developing that intellect so that you can. This is a Sattvic Nakshatra in the cycle. The primary motivation of this Nakshatra Revati is Sattvic. It is achieving Moksha through achieving liberation through Sattvic methods or Sattvic pathway. Look at this again. It's a Devagana. But the Trimurti principle is Shiva, which is dissolution, dissolving our karmas. He is back here to dissolve our sins, to dissolve our karmas. Jesus is back here. He's giving us an extended arm for us to move towards Aries. You know, the ram. you can see the, the sheep. He was the protector of the, the sheep. He, he is like a shepherd. He is here to guide us through the pathway like a shepherd. We are all the sheep, and we seek his guidance. And today being Christmas, his guidance is there. His light is shining, you know, ever brighter, you know, even brighter than what it was. So we want to understand these greater secrets through nakshatras. Look at the foundation about the foundation about is cows. Cows is nourishing in nature. It is like our mother, which takes care of us. And look at the foundation below, it's the cows. The cows are we, we are the cows. And he is the cow, he is the shepherd, we are the sheep. The desire is to become the lord of the animals. He's basically trying to say he is the lord of us. He is the lord of all, the, all, all of the, uh, the humanity. Jesus is the lord of humanity. Jesus is back again to teach us to show us the path to go to the to the afterlife, to show us what it is, the beauty of life that we live in. And this is through dissolving our karmas, the Shiva Trimurti principle. Okay. And the result is nourishment of the entire world. He is here to nourish, 
He's here to heal this entire world. And this is the message that he's bringing back. And you see the bird here associated with it. It's the pigeon. See the pigeon is also associated with peace, prosperity. He wants to bring peace back to this planet. And this is his greatest message on this special day of Christmas. I see a very strong correlation between Jesus and his preachings and the same with Lord Sri Krishna. You know, both were protectors of animals. They were lords of the animals and we are all animals. And you see that love, both of them were prema avatars. They were the epitome of love and compassion. They wanted to teach people it's only through love, compassion that we can actually build a better world. I would like to sing a couple of hymns from this very famous uh, musical uh, note. It's called Krishna Ni Begane Baro, which means Krishna, please come back soon. And this is a very famous song by Colonial Cousins. So let me hymn a couple of sentences from this uh, great um, song. So come back as Jesus. Come back and save the world, bless all the future of every boy and girl. Come back as Rama, forgive us for what we done. Come back as Allah, come back as anyone. Krishna ni begane baro. Krishna ni begane. Baro. Religion is the reason the world is breaking up into pieces. Color of the people keeps us locked in hate. Please relieve us. So come down and help us. Save all the little ones. They need a teacher. And you are the only one we can rely on. To build a better world, a world that's for children, a world that's for everyone. Krishna ni begane baro. Krishna ni begane baro. This is a plea to Krishna and Jesus to please come back soon and you know guide us and in the path of liberation and moksha. So thank you all of you for watching this short video on the special day of Christmas. Uh, please share your feedback and also do not forget to download um, the Cosmic Insights app. Um, we worked on an app to build the database of nakshatras to unleash the power of nakshatras or the lunar mansions and to do decode the nature's plan for you. So you can go and download this app for free from um, for iPhone from the Apple Store or the App Store or from uh, iTunes and also um, the Play Store on Google. So you can get these uh, get these apps for uh, get this app for your download. So you can use the Panchang, you can use the Nakshatras, you can use the Hora. So thank you very much for uh, watching this video today.